This is the Kikimori Algami number no. one Guto 240 millimeter knife from Chef Knives to Go. Welcome to another quick look product review. I'm Steve Gamash, and what we have this time, as mentioned, is a it's a beautifully crafted knife. It's really heirloom quality, uh, excellent fit and finish, top flight craftsmanship, uh, just beautiful blade. Uh, so this knife has construction of three layers. You, you have a soft iron reactive cladding over the top of the Algami Blue Paper Number no. One core steel, which is reactive as well. He treats around 62 Rockwell on that core steel. So it's an all reactive blade, but it'll patina over time and gain a lot of character as you use it. The weight and dimensions can vary a little bit from knife to knife, but this particular one is 174 grams or 6.1 ounces. These are tend to be undersized, so this is about uh, 234, 235 millimeters at the edge, or about 9.2 inches. And then the overall length is about 15 inches with this handle. These have a bit of thickness at the spine and, and some stiffness on the blade, but yet they're they're thin at the tip and the edge for performance. So it's a good balance of performance and kind of a little bit of a robust feel on the board. So this one I measured a little under three millimeters at the back, about 2.85, and then halfway down I got about 2.3, 2.35 millimeters. And then you'll see that this kind of maintains that. It doesn't thin out a lot until you hit the grind right here. And the grind on this where it starts thinning out from the clad from the sides of the blade to go around towards the edge is right where that visual line is. So it's right there. And so it's pretty thin at the tip. Performance should be very good on this. Let's take a look at the shot from the back side, the choil, and you'll see it's quite thin at the edge as well. So this would be a great combination of performance with some backbone to it. These are fairly tall blades. This one's about 52 millimeters at the back, so lots of cutting board clearance. And the handles are kind of old school Magnolia wood or hoe wood with a buffalo horn ferrule, octagonal ambidextrous, so kind of a classic uh, type of handle. Your buffalo horn will sometimes have various uh, patterns in it like this one does. This is a nice sample. And then they've got a good, looks like a pretty good glue up seal job there where the tang goes into the handle. These handles are fairly light and the blades got some meat to it, so that's going to bring the balance point forward a little bit. So there's your balance point right about there. And so that's going to be a little forward of a pinch grip, uh, but this gives you that kind of classic uh, wah handled style balance point where you got a little bit of weight forward, by, by, blah, blah, easier for me to say, balance bias to it. So that's kind of nice. Gives you a feeling a little bit of power as you're cutting things. Again, fit and finish is beautiful on these. This is an heirloom quality knife. So you've got hand engraved kanji. You can feel that as you run your fingers across it. A little bit less common these days. The finish job on this the, is kind of a diagonal sanded finish and they've got a beautiful what's called a kasumi finish on this where it's an old school type finish. Kind of a cloud look where you, there's your cladding, there's your coarse steel. Beautifully crafted. This is the left side of the blade. Again you've got diagonal finish marks. You've got some embossed kanji there. Beautiful Kasumi finish. They've done a fair amount of rounding and polishing on the spine and quite a bit on the choil. You can see the how shiny that is there. So really nice fit and finish on these. Great uh, grinds on them. Nice clean grind. Straight blade. Um, I'll give these maybe 5 out of 6 out of 10 on the edge. Uh, you can put a lot nicer edge on these, especially being Aogami steel. Uh, but uh, these will get stinking sharp if you do your job. Uh, let's see here. Let's look at the cutting board profile. So again, this is an all reactive blade, but it'll take a nice patina over time as you use it. So these have a just a nice smooth curve to the edge or flow from the tip to the back. You've got a little bit of a flat area towards the back third. You can do some chopping back there. Fairly high uh, tip on these, so some belly towards the tip, which means I can get really high before the tip wants to start digging in, pretty much as high as I want to go. And that means you'll rock this thing beautifully. This will rock great on product, but yet you still have a little flat spot towards the back. Tip draws, you're going to have to go pretty high on it, so not the world's best knife for a tip draw, but uh, still pretty darn versatile for a variety of cutting techniques. So if you're looking for old school craftsmanship, um, Reminds me almost of the Fujiyama line of knives from a few years ago. 
Uh, just beautiful craftsmanship. So this is the Kikamori Algami or Blue Number no. One Guto 240 millimeter knife.